Hi everyone, welcome back to this Getting Started with Kilo Code series. In this video, I want to show you how to use the Kilo Code custom rules feature to keep your agent consistent and align with your coding standards. So whenever you work on a project, your code base usually comes with a set of rules. Things like how components should be named, how functions are documented, or how files are structured. When you're using Kilo Code as your coding assistant, it's important to share those rules with it so the code it generates follows the same standards your team already uses. This way, everything will stay consistent from the very beginning. Kilo Code rules are basically text files with instructions that the agent must follow whenever it works with your code base. You can use plain text, but markdown files are recommended since they add a bit more structure. With custom rules, you can define and enforce your coding standards, set up restrictions, and even require documentation in a specific format for your project. Alright, let's see how custom rules work in practice. So here, I have Kilo Code already installed in VS Code, and I have a freshly generated React application using Vite over here. There are React components in the source folder here, and if we open the browser, we can see the starter page from Vite. Okay, so in this project, let's add some basic rules for the coding assistant. First, you need to create a folder named .kilocode, which is a folder that Kilocode will scan for custom configurations. In this folder, create another folder called the rules, and this is where you can create the markdown files for the custom rules you want to implement. For example, let's create a rules file named react-component-creation.md file, and in this file, let's define a simple rule. Hmm, maybe react component file and function name must be all uppercase. Okay, let's save this file. Now note that the rules can be as simple or as complex as you need for your project. We will expand on this rule later, but for now, let's test it out. Navigate to Kilo Code Chat window, and then let's ask it to create a new Hello World component. Press enter and let the agent work on the request. And here it is, we can see that the hello world component created by Kilocode now follows the rules. It uses all uppercase letters for both the file and function name. Uh, there is a little warning message here, uh, react is declared but never read. So let's type the component function here uh, with react.fc just to clear that warning message. Okay, so that's how rules work in a nutshell. Uh, now let's update this rule to something more useful. Let's say I want a JSTOC documentation block for every React component created. Back here in the component creation rule, I will change it to every function, class, or component must include a JSTOC block directly above its definition for documentation. At minimum, it includes description, param, and return value. Keep descriptions short, clear, and written in plain English. Okay, now save this rule and then back in Kilo Code, let's start a new chat session and then ask it to create a greet component that has two parameters, name and message. Press enter to send this prompt and let Kilo Code work on the request. And here we can see that the generated greet component now has this documentation block in JSTOC format showing the description, the parameters, and the return value. Okay, now that we've seen how the coding agent follows the rules, you can probably imagine how useful this become in real projects. As the project grows, you might have hundreds of React components, and instead of reminding Kilo Code to write the documentation in JS doc format again and again, you can just define the rules once, and Kilo Code will always enforce them for the project. Using rules, you can keep your coding standard consistent, save time during code reviews, and make it much easier to work as a team. Now, if you have many rules for your project, it might be best to separate those rules into several markdown files to make it easier to manage. For example, suppose you don't want Kilo Code to read your .env file. Uh, here I have a .env file containing some variables. They are not secret values, but let's pretend they are, and I don't want Kilo Code to read them. So in the rules folder, I can simply create a new markdown file called restricted files, and in that file, write files in the list contain sensitive data, they must not be read. And here I will define the .env file. Save this file, and it's already active. Now let's go back to Kilo Code, and then ask it to print the content of the .env file. Let it process the request for a moment. And here we can see that Kilo Code said that it can't read the file because it's a restricted file. So yeah, that's how you can create many rules files in Kilo Code. 
By the way, you can also configure and manage rules through the scale icon over here. When you click on the icon, the rules panel will show up and you can manage both workspace rules and global rules over here. You can disable existing rules, edit them, and also create new rules. So let's say I want to create a new global rule. I can just click the plus button over here and then put the rules name, uh, for example, global-rules.md, then press enter. And then in this rule file, I can add a description, uh, say global rules for killer code assistant. And then in this file, I will move the restricted files rule. And then also add another rule here to just say prioritize robust error handling and validation in all generated code. And that's it. Now let's save this file and the rule is now active in all killer code sessions. Now we can test it again. So let's delete the restricted files rule here and then ask killer code to read the .env file again. Submit the prompt uh, and it will reply with the same response. Now you might ask, Nathan, should I use global rules or workspace rules? Well, workspace rules are usually the way to go because they live inside the project folder and can be versioned right alongside your code in Git comments and history. Global rules are convenient, but they don't have that project level context and control. And since they live outside of the project, they also take more effort to maintain. So as a best practice, stick with workspace rules unless you truly need something that applies everywhere. And in my personal experience, that is quite rare. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Now you know how to use custom rules to keep killer code consistent and working the way you want it to. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye.